All right. We're back. Uh, we're having some technical issues, but by faith and perseverance, we overcome. As we've been taught by our grandfather, the late Reverend Dr. H.B. Sampson Sr., as I learned through my father, our daddy, Reverend Dr. Reuben I. Sampson Sr., you have to organize to fight the devil. So we had a technical issue. We came back out, and here we are right back one more again. Amen. Glory to God. So we're encouraged on tonight. Now we're missed to doing something, but we're going to jump this all right on tonight. Look at somebody and say, neighbor. It's going to be all right. Look at somebody else and say, neighbor, it's going to be all right. And take your cell phone and look at yourself like you're taking a selfie and say, self, in case you forgot, here's a reminder, it's going to be all right. It's the will of God that you be encouraged on tonight. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He is our God, and through him we do valley. This is the day, this one right here, that God has made. I do rejoice. And I am glad in it, and you should too. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let's make him, his name bigger, and let us exalt his name together. For it is he that has made us, and not we ourselves. And it is by his hand that we are fed. Amen. So we thank you tonight for your patience as we got through that. There is a word from the Lord on tonight. The enemy has been fighting us going live on Word Wednesday, but I'm greatly encouraged because that's a good sign that we're on the right path and we're doing the right thing being here on Facebook Live on Wednesdays. If you join us on Instagram, we thank you for being here. Uh, we're on Facebook Live as well, so we're on two different platforms at the same time. I think that's just awesome uh, that we could, what they used to call simulcast, I kind of dated myself there by saying that word, but we can be on two different platforms at the same time so we welcome you tonight we hope and trust and pray that you've been having a good week so far the weather changed so we're not dealing with mosquitoes uh, that's a beautiful thing and we can wear some of our fall clothes if even but just for a while <laughs> but we thank god for it because it's a blessing you have to learn to enjoy and be content no matter what state you may find yourself in whether it's hot we're gonna cut the air condition on if it's cool we're gonna cut the heat on and we're gonna keep right on moving right along and continue to move forward so we thank god for you being here on tonight ask if you would please share this facebook live to your news feed uh, there tag somebody if you haven't liked or followed our facebook page please do so we're also here on youtube as well sister rebecca see you uh good to see you on tonight cousin Bueller, good to see you sister jocelyn i see you over here on ig as well so we're greatly encouraged by your presence we encourage you to comment uh, when something bears witness or you agree with something being said, type it in the comments. I know that's right. Amen. Or whatever way it is uh, that you let it be known that you agree and you know that God can do that or God, or God is that particular or has that particular characteristic. So we encourage on tonight. Amen. And God continues to allow us to be here together on Wednesday. We're here every Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. on Facebook Live, uh, going some of any and everywhere. And people's lives are being changed, impacted, delivered, and helped. Hey, bro, Jim, good to see you out there as well. No doubt he's out there somewhere as well. So good to see each and every one of you on tonight. And we thank God for his presence. We thank God for his power in our day-to-day -day lives. God is with you. He will never leave you. He won't forsake you. What does that mean? He's always going to be right there no matter what the odds are against you or for you. He is there on your side and since he's the greater one on the inside of you he's more than the whole world against you all right so you just be encouraged on tonight so we'll begin tonight at the book of jeremiah chapter number 10 verses 4 through 10 I want to invite you look come out and join us on sunday mornings at 8 30 a.m i'm trying to tell you the presence and power of god shows up people get saved people get healed people get delivered listen we had a demonstration of god's power this past sunday about how he loves his people and how he cares for his people uh pastor lindsey granger or lindsey granger my sister gave a wonderful word on sunday about that destiny requires our obedience and we have to continue to f move forward and push forward and do what god tells us to do on a daily basis and that destiny is not a one-time event that it is a lifetime of being obedient that gets us indeed to our destiny once again that scripture for our main text tonight is jeremiah 10 verses 4 through 10 jeremiah 10 <laughs> yeah, verses 4 uh through 10 why are you laughing pastor because the media team there type scripture because they didn't hear it i love it i'm here for it i'm definitely here for it so like we say we're here on wednesdays it's not designed to be boring we're gonna keep it real we're gonna keep it above we're gonna keep it 100 whatever you want to call it it's gonna be real and it's gonna be something that you 
can deal with and apply to your real everyday life. So we encourage you to read the Bible from Genesis all the way through Revelation. And I also encourage you, if you desire to support the ministry, you can do so by visiting www.gtclc.org slash giving. And then you can also give through the Tithely app, T-H-I-T-H-E-L-Y, and type in Golden Triangle Christian Fellowship Church, Beaumont, Texas, and you can give through that as well. And then you can also give via Cash App, all capital letters, capital G, capital T, capital C, capital L, and capital C. All right, so let's get into the lesson on tonight. I pray, grace, heavenly God, our Father, we thank you for this opportunity to be together. We thank you, God, that you're ever with us, you're ever present. We thank you for being our Father, our Savior, our strong child. We can run to you and be saved. Heavenly Father, I thank you on tonight that you are full of grace, you are full of mercy, full of peace. God, I thank you personally for this opportunity to share with these, your people. Now, God, I ask you to take me out of myself and to be less of me and more of you, less of me and more of you, less of me to us all of you and none of me, not unto my name, but unto your name, O oh God. Be all the glory, all the honor, all the majesty, all the dominion, and all the power. Heavenly Father, I thank you for boldness and accurate articulation of speech. I thank you, God, and those sinners of my own is used. In other words, the Spirit of God would dictate. Heavenly Father, I thank you tonight for helping your people answer their questions because we know that they have them, God. God, we thank you for giving them a firm foundation, which is you. We thank you for building them up, O oh, Heavenly Father, God, and tearing down what needs to be torn down within them, O oh, Heavenly Father, God. Correct us where we need to be corrected or lift us where we need to be uplifted. Take our anxiety and depression and give us peace and joy. Where we have confusion, give us knowledge and wisdom and understanding. Oh, Heavenly Father, most importantly, we thank you for restoring relationships tonight, fixing marriages and fixing things between family members, oh, Heavenly Father, God. Let them know that death is real, but that doesn't have to be the way that things end between them, that they can't settle and resolve their differences. Now, Father, most importantly, we thank you for everybody to get saved on tonight, spirit-filled, healed and delivered. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, all agree with that prayer, said amen. Jeremiah chapter 10, verses... 4 through 10, reading to you from the King James Version of the Bible. We encourage you to read the Bible from Genesis all the way through Revelation so you know what the Word of God says for you. Don't just take my word for it. Read it yourself. Get your Bible out. Get your what we call a paper Bible, which is a, well, I guess we call it a traditional Bible. You know, the one is actually a physical book. And read it for yourself so you know what the Word of God says. It's not a boring book. It's a lot of action, a lot of activity. A lot of things God talks about in there you wouldn't think that God even knew about or would even relate to. So read the Bible for yourself so you know these things. So let's read it. Jeremiah chapter 10, verses 4 through 10, and it says, They deck it with silver and with gold. They fasten it with hammers and with nails that it move not. So this is basically talking about how an idol is constructed and how man goes about to create and make idols. And an idol is anything that you worship that is not the true and living God. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. He said, they are upright as a palm tree, but they don't speak. They don't talk. They must needs be born. In other words, they need to be born because they cannot go. They cannot move. Don't be afraid of them, for they cannot do evil. I mean, they cannot do evil. Neither also is it in them to do good. For as much there is none like unto you, O Lord. You are great, and your name is great in might. Who will not fear you, O king of nations? For to you does it appertain. For as much as among all the wise men of the nations and in all their kingdoms, there is none like you. In other words, nobody is as smart as God. I know a lot of people have thought they are as smart as God and thought that they were a God. No, 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 no. Just because you declare yourself to be something does not make you that. As Malcolm X once said, and I will quote him, even though I'm a Christian preacher. And he said, and I quote, and I love the quote, it says, just because a cat has kittens in a oven does not make them biscuits if you can get that you understand what this scripture is saying that there is no god as smart of god as god and he is the god of god verse 8 it says but they are altogether brutish and foolish the stock is the doctrine of vanities silver plates i mean silver spread into places brought from torches and gold from euphaz the work of the workman in the hands of the founder blue and purple is their clothing they are all the work of cunning men in other words this is talking about how they actually take silver and, and import it and they import gold to make idols so they have an ascent from another area to actually construct and or make these idols but the lord is the true god and if you have a paper bible once you underline this next phrase he is the living god not he was he is the living god and an everlasting king at his wrath 
the earth will tremble and the nations shall not be able to abide his indignation. In other words, when God really turns off his grace, when he really turns off his mercy and his saving power and decides that he's going to release his fury, it's going to be a problem on this planet. That's why we encourage you to come to Jesus Christ now while you have time. Accept Jesus Christ in your heart while the chance is available to you because that day is going to come when you won't be able to accept him. The day is going to come when you're going to meet your maker. Everybody's going to see him. Because the book says every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess to the glory of God. But I want to go with him as well. I don't want you to see him because everybody's going to see him. The most wicked of people that ever walked the planet are going to see him. But I want to go and be with him and that should be your heart's desire too. So tonight we want to talk about Jesus lives. Again, Jesus lives. He is alive. Say it again. Jesus lives. That's what we're talking about tonight. Jesus lives. And the objective tonight is for you to know he lives and that you can depend on him to be who he said that he would be and to do what he said he would do, which is that he would never leave us, he would never forsake us, so that we can boldly say, the Lord is our helper. We don't have to fear what man or woman could do unto us. So the objective again is to let you know that Jesus Christ is alive and that we should not limit him because trying to make idols out of other things and other people is not the move. That That's not a good look for us as Christians. It doesn't become us as Christians. Our faith, our hope, our praise, and our worship should go to God the Father only. I said it again. Our praise, our worship, our adoration should go to God the Father only. Praise is thanking God for what he's done. Worshiping him is when I will thank him for who he is. So that's the distinction between the two. So Jesus Christ is alive and we should not limit him. Okay. So in our foundation text, which is the first text that we read, that's the one that we're building upon. You get to that bottom, it says, but the Lord is the true God. He is the living God and an everlasting king. He's not just a king for his lifetime. He's just not the king until somebody, you know, organizes a coup and, and, and dethrones him. That's not how it works. His throne, his power, his authority is from everlasting to everlasting. Okay? He is the living God and an everlasting king. So there's no need of you fretting yourself or concerning yourself about what is the state or the condition of Jesus Christ's well-being? Jesus Christ is alive and he is doing fine and he is yet alive. He, told, he tells us in Scripture not to paint a picture or to make a sculpture of, of him. Why, Pastor? Because Jesus Christ himself, God the Father and God the Holy Spirit, cannot be confined to just this screen that I'm on right here. Whether I draw him through Adobe or on Canva or with a pen and a paper, God is always much bigger than that. If we can make what we think or hope to be a scale model of God, it still wouldn't be enough to represent who God is. Because we, I mean, which of us and any of us, what medium do we have that could accurately, accurately display and show all that God is? God is not a flat God, which means he's not one-dimensional like a piece of paper. We call this one-dimensional. Then you go into 2D, you know, we start getting into the different uh, coordinates of, of his being. And then you go into 3D, which is like this here, but he's still deeper than that because he exists and operates in time, but he functions outside of time as well. He's the alpha with no omega. I, I mean, it, it gets really deep. You know, he speaks and the man lives. He speaks and the man dies. And you think you can capture all of that? In a sculpture, in a painting, in a drawing, with some pencil or with some clay or with a piece of metal or on a computer, and all these things exist because he said, let there be these things. His scripture says, in him we live and move and have our being, and without him we can't do nothing. It says, in him and by him were all things created for him and for his glory, for himself. In other words, he made this stuff like, practically as almost like he said, if you like me to say it like this, he made this planet having fun. For his glory, that means for, but he gave it unto humanity. We lost it to Satan when Adam fell, and that's a whole nother sermon right there. 
But let me show it to you in scripture. Acts 17, 29. Acts, Acts 17, verse 29. Sorry. Acts 17, verse 29 reads, For as much then as we are the offspring of God, we are not to think that the Godhead, it's talking about God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, is like unto gold, silver, or stone, graven by art and man's device. You, you, you cannot limit God. That's what I try to tell you often. I can't. Don't limit God to your mind because your concept of God is going to be different than mine. That's why we need to fellowship with each other so we can get different angles and different perspectives on who God is because none of us have it all. We all see in part. We all know in part. We all prophesy in part. We all learn in part. We all hear in part. But God is greater than anything that we could ever imagine. That, that, that's, that's why he's alive. And, and what I like about God, his thoughts are not our thoughts and his ways are not, our, our, are not ours. His thoughts are as high above ours as the heavens are above the earth. So I'll say it again. God does not desire, nor did he desire, to be limited to a canvas or a piece of stone or a piece of metal or a piece of fine uh, jewelry or a screen. And please, Christians, if you are a Christian, you should not have a crucifix. I mean, I'm, yeah, a crucifix uh, in your possession. Jesus Christ did not stay on the cross. That's just one part of who he was. He didn't stay on the cross. He's not still on the cross. I say that in Christians. I'm like, why do you still have that up? He's still. He's not on the cross anymore. He he got buried and rose on the third morning, which was Sunday morning. He got up. He's alive in the world, and you still got him up there. That's not it. Jesus Christ is alive, and it's important that you grasp that concept and that picture on tonight for your own self, for your own faith walk. God is not dead. Well, it's all kind of crazy stuff, and God letting this good stuff go on. Well, you know, if God stopped them from doing the crazy, as Pastor told us, He has to stop us from doing our crazy too. Oh, that's how that works. Yeah, that's how that works. His plan and His design is that. All should come to repentance, not just y'all, not just some, not just they, not just them, not just us, not just we, not just he or she, but that we all should come to repentance. God doesn't want to be facsimile, and that's a big word for fake or imitation of himself. Isaiah 46 verses 5 and 6 says, Isaiah 46 verses 5 and 6 says, to whom Will you like him? In other words, who y'all going to compare me to? Who is y'all going to stand me next next, next against? Who's who, who going to get to be on a T-chart with me in comparison? Who is that person? He say nobody. And make me equal in comparison that we may be alike. Your lavish gold out of the bag and weigh the silver in the balance and hire a goldsmith and he makes it a God. They fall down, yea, they worship. In other words, he's saying you get your gold out of the bag, you weigh some silver in the balance and you you... Put that together, boil, you know, boil it and melt it down, put it in a mold, fashion it, and you make that a God, and you bow down and worship that stuff, and that's something that you can control and you can manipulate. Mm -mm. I don't need a God. If I can make you, you're not a God to me. And I sure can't worship you if I can make you, if I can create you, if I can put my hands on you. No, I need a God that can be able to touch me and reach me where I am. And help me with what I'm dealing with and what I'm going through and what I need to work on. That type of God. I don't need some God. I can go to somebody. Hey, I want to get the uh, the supermodel version of the, of the idol that I worship. No, ma'am. No, sir. No, no, no. I serve the true and the living God in Jesus Christ. He is his name. And there is no other God. And there is no other name under heaven whereby men and women, boys and girls, the confused, the lost, and the hurting, the downtrodden may be saved except at the name of Jesus Christ. Don't get that twisted. There are many ways to God. Which one are we talking about? The scripture says no man goes to the Father, God, but by Jesus Christ. That's many ways to the devil. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Because scripture says like this, that the broad and wide is the path to hell and destruction. But narrow is the way that leads to eternal life. So, yeah. Yeah, you can say there's many ways to that God, but not to the eternal God, the living God, the true and living God, the Alpha and Omega. Get, get. One way, and that's by Jesus Christ. Don't let people twist you with words. That's why I encourage you to read your Bible for yourself. Stop. Don't even depend on me. Read for yourself. Because I can't read you this whole book. 
I can't teach you this whole book. Pastor can't do it. Your bishop, your prophet, whoever you go to, whoever your pastor, your, 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 your person is, there's not enough time in the world, not enough days in the world. So I'm going to say it again. God does not want to be a fake or imitation of himself because he is real. He is real. It don't matter about what other people say about him. That doesn't make or break him either way. God knows who he is every day. He said, I'm the Lord. I change not. I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is already convinced and already confident in who and what he is. And he's okay with that every day regardless of how you feel about it. Because he does not depend on the, 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 the activity of man or the opinions of man to determine his worth and who he is. He said, if y'all don't want to praise me, he said, I can get these rocks to raise up and do it for y'all. It ain't that big a deal. That's what he's literally saying. It, that ain't special. <gasps> he, God is not going to be denied. People can say what they want to say. God is not going to be denied. You can believe what you want to believe. He's not going to be denied. He does not fall short of his word. His word will come to pass. If it have to wait on until you die, it's going to still come to pass. We cannot make the creator out of that which was created. Talking about, still talking about that Jesus Christ is alive. Because if he is alive, we're just making a representation of him. And for what? We can't do it. Romans 1 verses 20 through 23 say, For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly, clearly seen being understood by the things that are made, even his external power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because of that, when we knew God, they glorified him. When they knew God, they glorified him not as God. In other words, when they learned who God was, they still didn't want to give him credit. Neither were they thankful. In other words, they weren't grateful either, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Why? Because they didn't believe. See, Jesus Christ is light. Satan likes ignorance. He likes to keep you in the dark. He hopes that you don't learn about how he functions and his role and that you can overcome him, that he's already defeated and that he doesn't have a right to operate in the earth. He has to have a human vessel in the earth because he doesn't have an earth suit, which is what we call a body. You got me? He likes you to function like that. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Oh, and changed the glory of the incor uncorruptible God into an image made like the corruptible man and the birds and four-footed four -footed beasts and creeping things. In other words, they, they took who God was and tried to make him into a little creature. Give his glory to a creature. You can't do that. You have to give God praise and credit and his due for what he does in your life. Why? Because he is alive. He is alive. Secular history, apart from the Bible, bears witness to Jesus Christ walking this planet. It does. Many other scholars of history mention it. I mean, and somebody even goes so far to say, and I'm going to take it there tonight. One particular individual goes so far to say, why would anybody keep talking about a man who had 12 disciples? And then that spread slowly but surely kept growing and growing and growing. How does something like that take off and continue to perpetuate itself for over 2,000 years if he wasn't real? I'll wait. And don't let anybody try to trick you, number one, in saying that Jesus Christ is not alive. And sure, don't let them make you think that the devil is not real. He is real, and he is your enemy every day. He's not your friend. There's no good one and a bad one. He's bad. No matter how his shape, form, or fashion shows up, he's bad. He's imitated. So he makes himself appear as an angel of light. The heavens can't not contain God, and I want to encourage you tonight to not limit God to this small picture that you have of him. 1 Kings 8, 27. But was God indeed dwell on the earth? Was God really going to live on the earth? This is Solomon after he built this, this temple for him. Behold, the heaven and heavens of heavens cannot contain you. How much less this house I have built it. You know, many of us are great fans of, of different rappers. I'm going to call his, his name on tonight. You know, and 
his name is Tupac Shakur. Many of you are familiar with uh, with Pac. And, you know, he said, why God needs stained glass window on his house? I mean, if that's what people decided to do to, to, to put on God's house, what's your problem with it? Now, things like that send my antenna. I don't mean no harm on tonight. I'm just keeping it real with you. Like, why people have a problem with God's house? I mean, people can build a Taj Mahal. Oh, that's a glorious place. The eight wonders of the world. It's a glorious thing. Oh, uh, you know, Statue of Liberty is a beautiful thing, but people want to build God's house to live, look a certain type of way. Oh, it don't take all that to build a house for God. If that's the vision that God gave those people to do, and that's how they want to make God's house look, more power to them. It can't hold God, but his presence will be there. It can't keep God, but his presence will be there. It's funny, like our pastor talks about, and this helps some of you pastors out there. You know, we talk all the time, and he, he say, you know, you grow up, you know, in and around these churches, and churches seem, I'm going to say, spooky. And I'm not talking about a demonic spooky, just the, the way that they are. You know, the, the sounds are, are different, and you, if you've ever been inside of them, have to cut the lights on like I did when I was a boy, it's, it gets interesting at times. But Pastor talking about, he said, he said, he said, he said, he said Rube, because he called me Rube, but he called me Rib sometime, or Cag, he got a lot of different names for him. Shout out to Dad. It's important to have a dad in your life in some shape, form, or fashion. He said, he say, man, he said, you got to realize, but when you become a pastor, that same spook is on you. But what pastor is talking about is literally the presence of God on the building, and that same presence of God is also on you. Oh. That's why a lot of times, bro, pastors, pastors, people call you weird. Or they may call you a mystic because they don't have any other way to describe that. But that's the presence of power of God that you carry on your person. Oh, Lord, I didn't know that was in there tonight. But that'll help somebody on their on a journey on tonight. So don't think it's strange. Don't think it's weird. But we can't build a house big enough to hold God. Scripture said he meted the world with the span. That's his pinky feet. We understand that that's allegory. not saying he actually uses his pinky to do it. But it's saying if he wanted to, he could. And that's how great and awesome he is in his power. He spoke the world into existence. Why could he do that? Because he was alive and his words were life. In the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word became flesh. What does that mean? The word came alive in human form and lived among us. What lives? Living things. Who's alive? Jesus Christ. So Jesus Christ is alive on tonight. Deuteronomy, 5, Deuteronomy 5, 24 says, And you said, Behold, the Lord our God has showed us his glory and his greatness. In other words, God showed us how bad he is. He showed us how strong he is. He showed us how good he looks. I mean, do y'all understand that nation Israel, these, this group of black people, this group of Africans were the only people that God actually, that, that's recorded for us as Christians that we see. That he shows up and they got to see what his presence really looked like, how he how mountains were and earthquakes happened and fire came from heaven that he showed himself to these people and they got to see it and they were like man we can't handle it Moses you go talk to God for us it's too much that's why we say that heavens can't contain you the heaven of heavens can't what that mean pastor outer space can't contain God because he's so big and you still think God got a problem with your problem and that's a problem for him and that he's scared, and that he's going to run off, he's going to tuck tail and go the other way, that, that it makes God nervous, and he don't know what to do? I think not. Jesus Christ himself is alive. That's why you hear his voice speaking to you every morning. That's why you hear his voice talking to you at night and throughout the day. That's why you can talk to him. I don't have to go sit in front of some statue to talk to God. I don't have to sit on a certain thing to talk to God. I can talk to God standing, sitting, laying down, driving, walking, running, reading, whatever I'm doing, I can talk to God. I don't have to have a particular space or form. Now, if I want to take it there, I can. There are different postures in prayer, and I gave you some of them as well. But I'm not limited where I got to be in this exact location. Otherwise, he ain't going to hit me. It does not work like that with God. Why, Pastor? Because he's actually alive. And it's not about you being bound to a certain place. It's not about you bound to a certain location. It's not about you being bound to a certain statue or idol. It's about you having a true and living God living on the inside of you. And you understand that I can talk to him whenever I get good and ready. Why? Because he is alive. He's very real. He can't be felt. You might not feel him all the time, but I'm glad from time to time he lets me know that he's real and he can be 
film. Read the scripture too, and this will be our last scripture for on tonight. You hear us talk about all the time how the lamb was slain before the foundation of the world. And we find that over in the book of Revelations. Where is that scripture text at? And it says, Revelation 1, 18, I'm he that lives and was dead. And behold, I'm alive forevermore. Oh, what does that mean? He's alive forever, ever, forever, ever. That's what that literally means. He said, I was dead, but I'm alive again. He defeated death, hell, and the grave. Took the keys to that. And alive forevermore, amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. Revelation 4 and 9. And when those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne, who lives forever and ever. There it is. Jesus Christ is alive. He's not dying again. He already died and got up one time. Revelation 10 and 6. And swear by him that lives forever and ever, who created heaven and the things that there in it are and the earth and all things that are there and are and the sea and the things which are there and, and that there should be time no longer so what you saying pastor jesus christ is alive and because he is alive he desires to have relationship with you that's how you can have a relationship with god because he is alive And he wants to have a living relationship with you. He wants to live on the inside of you. As I told you on last week, I turned a little boy back to his class. So with 40 students in the class, in the gym room, they just doing their things, just doing what they do, and they would start to sit down so they could go back to the regular class. And one of the boys said, thank you, Mr. Sampson. I said, huh, what the little dude doing? Talking about some thank you, Mr. Sampson, what are you, what are you doing? Because I brought the boy back class and the teacher said that's his friend Miss Sampson I said huh he said she said yeah that's his friend he said thank you for my friend Mr. Sampson huh and it got my attention because he was thanking me for bringing his friend back to him and you and I both have that type of friend in Jesus Christ we have somebody who will bring us back to him no matter how we messed up no matter what we messed up in what we messed up with who we messed up with he'll bring us back and you too can say thank you for my friend and that friend is jesus the christ and he desired to have a relationship with you it doesn't matter how bad you are how weak you may think you are even how strong you are, how rich you may be or how poor you are jesus christ saves no matter where we find ourselves in life and the best time for you to receive him is right now the best time for you to accept him in your heart is right now well, how do i receive him you receive him uh, romans 10 and 10 says with the heart man believes and with mouth with the mouth confession is made unto salvation which means you can be saved and know it you don't have to worry you don't have to concern yourself if you believe with your inner man which is your spirit man that's the eternal part of you that lives forever. You have one, whether you know it or not. If anybody has never told you, I'm telling you tonight, you have one. And you say with your mouth that you believe you're saved. And you begin to have a relationship with Jesus Christ in that very moment. Or if you're already saved, say, look, I want to come back to God. I want to get back in right standing with him. I, 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 I know I haven't gone to church in a while. Uh, you know, my being praying is way off and I need to come back to God because I've, I've gone, gotten away too far and you know I shouldn't be in the things that I'm into but I need God's help and I want to get back and I want to fix my relationship with God we pray one prayer to fix both of those things so I can help you with the sanity part I can't believe with for you I can believe with you but I can't believe for you but I can lead you in that prayer I'm going to ask you to repeat this prayer for me if you desire or you want to be saved on tonight if you want to have a relationship with god on tonight and you want to come back to god and that prayer says repeat it after me please dear god i know without jesus christ that i am lost i believe your word that if i say with my mouth the lord jesus and i believe in my heart that god raised him from the dead i shall be saved and i invite the lord jesus christ into my life and receive you by faith as my Lord and Savior. I'm sorry for my sins. 
And I thank you for your forgiveness. Jesus, you are my Lord. I'm now a new creature in Christ and a child of God. Thank you for saving me in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And if you repeated that after me, you said that after me, you're saved. You're back in right standing with God. You're in relationship with God right now. So this is what we encourage you to do for you to have that relationship. Because, you know, relationship is based on time spent together, what you do together, and what you give to each other. So I want to encourage you, give God your time. How? Praying to him every day. Talking to him every day. Listening to him every day. Read your Bible. That's giving yourself to reading so you can learn about who God is. And then I encourage you to join a church that's going to talk to you about God, that can help you with your problems, teach you how to attack your problems, how to win and get over the things uh, that occur in your life from the Word of God. It's going to teach you how to be who God made you to be and to do the things that God would have you to do. Then we encourage you also to get baptized. Let's get baptized. Just get baptized. What is it? It's I will show that you receive Jesus Christ as your Savior. Okay? So, and read your Bible. When I say read your Bible, start in the book of Genesis. Read it all the way through Revelation. Some people say, oh, you're starting the book of John. Some people say, you start in Matthew. No, man, read the whole thing. So you know what God says. You understand the necessity for Jesus Christ and why he came into the world and what happened after he came and left the world as well. And that's important. It is important. That you read your Bible, you pray, talk to God, and that you join a church. We love to have you as a member of the fellowship. We love to be your pastor. We love to see you being who God made you do, be and doing what he gave you to do. So if you desire uh, to be an e-member, uh, you can't visit our church's website. We're going to post that link here. If you desire to be an e-member, which is a electronic member, just click on the link that was just posted right there. Fill out that contact card and say, I'd like to commit to membership. It doesn't matter where you are on the planet anymore. You can live in America and belong to a church in South America. You can live in Texas and belong to a church in California these days. Now, that's just the power of technology. I'm not against it. I'm here for it. I'm like the Apostle Paul. I'm just glad that the Word of God is going out and people's lives are being uh, changed and help. If you desire to be spirit filled on tonight, you can be spirit filled with the Spirit of God. It's a gift of the Spirit, when you, and its evidence is shown by speaking in other tongues. It's when you speak in a language you haven't been taught to speak in before. So, what I ask you to do if you want to be spirit filled on tonight, stretch your hands toward the screen. Nothing magical about it. Uh, it just serves to relax and to show a posture of surrender of or stance or position of surrendering to God to be filled with this spirit. And I'm going to pray that you fill with the Holy Spirit and that the evidence of speaking with tongues happen for you. Grace, Heavenly God, our Father, we thank you for those who want to be spirit filled on tonight. Heavenly Father, we thank you that your presence and your power and the fire of the Holy Ghost, 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 the fire of the Holy Ghost comes upon them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. They release their prayer language by faith on tonight in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now what you may hear, you got spirit for on tonight, it may sound like jibber jab or baby talk or pieces of word or whatever it is, you have to speak it out. You have to say it. And over time, you keep saying it, you develop a flow. Just like how you learn to speak in English or whatever your native language is, you'll develop that prayer language as well. And when you pray in the Spirit, it builds up your most holy faith, allows you to serve in the kingdom of God, and it builds up your most holy faith and it allows you to pray according to the perfect holy will of God. Because how many times things happen, things going crazy, you don't know what to say, you can't find your prayer book, and you forget the, what you want to call prayer warriors. And numbers and all them prayer warriors ain't prayer warriors. Some of them some prayer hellions, but that's another conversation. I'm not going there tonight, Reverend Sampson. Um, 
you don't know the words to say, you can pray in the Holy Ghost in order to get in directly through to God. So before we leave, I want to heal you on tonight. If there's pain, sickness, or disease in your body, God using me as a vessel to heal you. And all the reason I can say that, because I believe that Jesus Christ is alive and that his presence and his power rests on me to heal your body. So you desire to be healed on tonight. Be healed. Gracious Heavenly Father, God, our Father, we thank you tonight. For healing your people to fire the Holy Ghost, 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 to fire the Holy Ghost. Permits every cell, every ligament, every joint, and every muscle, every tendon, and every organ, every nerve, every axiom, every layer of the skin, every hair on their body, oh Heavenly Father God. We attack cancer. It must be uprooted by your hand in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The fire the Holy Ghost, oh Heavenly Father God. Permeates their body. The healing, heating, cooling power of your anointing. Touches that sore area in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We command bones in the leg to return to the normal size in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We command all bodily function to function at the design and intent which you purpose them to function right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We curse kidney stones right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, we thank you for melting those in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I see those dissolving right now. Heavenly Father God, we thank you that you are a healer. That's what you are and that's what you're doing. Your people are healed. They are made free set free and whole in the name of the Lord Jesus the Christ. Be healed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Again, so we thank you for being here on tonight with us. Always greatly encouraged by your presence. Thank you for your amens and comments uh, there in the comment section as well. We appreciate you. We appreciate your support. We appreciate your prayers that you, when you come up to us and let us know, hey, I heard the message you preached on Sunday or I saw you what you did on Wednesday. That really encourages us and it helps us a lot and it goes a long way. So we encourage you. Of course, this is the holiday season. I'm going to say like mama would tell us, watch your cell papers, pay attention to yourselves uh, so you can work on your Thanksgiving done, so you can work on, you know, getting those children toys. If you got to do layaway, do what you got to do to be a blessing in the earth. If you are a blessing, God will bless you. And anytime that you desire to be a blessing, God's going to bless you. Bless your cousin Beulah. Thank you so sweet, sweet, loving cousin that she is. Nothing like having good, sweet, big cousins. There's nothing like her. Appreciate her. But we thank God for each and every one of you being here on tonight. Appreciate your presence. We appreciate your prayers. And you, what you say, our prayer. Yeah, because I, I, you, you pray for people, you know, that they come on and that they hear from God and that God answer their question. And we don't take that for granted. Cause it's not like that everywhere, so we do want to express our gratitude for that. We want to encourage you Sunday morning, we're gonna be at 1180 Washington Boulevard, Beaumont, Texas, at our physical location. Now, we are here on Facebook Live as well, but we uh, do the live stream from our physical location. And we're also going to be taking communion. If you are a Christian, you should be taking communion as well because Jesus Christ says that this do in remembrance of me until I come back. So if you haven't taken it in three months, you're out of fellowship. Come take communion. Just come on. There at church. We're not going to be there all day, I guarantee you. We're going to be out of time enough for you to see the game. If the Lord don't tear, the Spirit don't tear, we not either. Hey Amen. We're not going to rush through service. And I'm not trying to um, say that church has to go fast or anything like that, but it just is what it is. And I'm trying to tell you the truth. You need to come out to a church, a faith-filled environment where people believe like you believe and know God like you know God and believe that God can like you believe that God can. And in their, that environment, you can learn, be set free, heal, be delivered, and hear from God for yourself. I could be up talking about making pancakes and the Spirit of God will be talking to you about how you can fix your marriage and how you can help your child with their homework. That's how the Spirit of God works. That 1180 Washington Boulevard. I'm not saying it just because it's my church. I'm saying it because it's the truth. I'm not saying it just because that's where I'm a member and that's where I belong. I'm saying it because it is the truth. If you stand in need of answers, Jesus Christ is the answer. So I'll leave with this. As you go, tell the world about Jesus. Tell them about his love. Let them know that Jesus saves, Jesus heals, Jesus prospers. I pray God's best upon you tonight and that you go with God and his face shines brightly upon you. I bid you peace, nods, and blessings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I see you on Sunday morning. God bless you.